there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today for another of my videos. I hope you're well. Um, I hope you've got a drink or some sewing to do while you sit back and listen to what I've been making in June because this vlog is all about my June sewing makes. And I'm really looking forward to sharing what I've been making. Um, it's been a bit of a mixed bag of weather here in the south of England in June. We've had some lovely sunny days, but also some really rainy, cold days. But I have mainly been sewing for summer. I've got some really um, lovely summery sun sundresses to share with you um, and um, some really bright colours too and a swimming costume as well. So I'm really looking forward to sharing those all. Um, so let's get started. And if you are new to my channel, my channel generally is about sewing. I do sometimes throw a little bit of knitting in too. And I'd love it if you would subscribe and um, press the bell notification to join me on my sewing journey um, so you'll get to hear about my future vlogs, which are all about yeah, sewing patterns, fabric and that sort of thing. But anyway, in this vlog, I'm going to be talking about my June makes, but first I thought I'd share what I'm wearing today. And today here in the south of England, just looking out the window, it's quite overcast, um, but it's not very cold. It's quite mild. So I thought I'd get on one of my summery tops to team with a pair of jeans. And this one I made, I think it was last year or the year before, and it's using this pattern here, which is the Stevie tunic by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's one of Tilly's older patterns, and it's one of her patterns for beginners. And um, yeah, it's a really nice one, actually. It's quite a boxy, straight fit tunic top, and you can make it into a dress length too. I'll show you the line drawings here. It's got grown on sleeves and you can add little cuffs on, which I've done on my version here. It's got little cuffs. Um, and then it's got a little back yoke and you can fasten it either with a tie or a ruler loop and button. So it's quite a, um easy one to make. So there aren't any darts. There's no um, button, well, unless you add a little button for the ruler loop, but no button holes and um, no zips or anything like that. You just kind of throw it on and it's designed to be quite a loose fit. And I usually size down on this pattern, actually. I'll put up a picture of me wearing so you can see. Um, I'm usually a Tilly size two or up to three on the hips. But I actually size down this pattern. I make the size one because it's designed to be quite oversized and I don't like it too super oversized. So yeah, I made the size one and I made it in this really lovely viscose fabric. I think it came from First for Fabrics, um, but it was really popular a while ago and I think it's really pretty with these really lovely different colours on it. But yeah, in, in this case, it's quite a relaxed, breezy top. And I've done the um, tie closure on the back, as you can see. So it's just really comfy to wear. And I think it looks really nice with a pair of jeans and a pair of sandals for summery weather. But that's why I'm wearing today, the Stevie um, top by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's a really great pattern, actually. I think more recently they've released an add-on you can buy where you can turn it into a dress with a gathered skirt, which I think looks really nice too. I haven't got it, but I do really like the idea of that one too. But anyway, let me move on to what I've been making in June. So my first make I've got to share with you in June is actually my second make of this pattern in as many months. I made one version that I shared in my last makes video and I liked it so much I thought I'd make one more version. And it's using this pattern here, which is the Shelby Dress and Romper by True Bias. So it's a bit of an older pattern, but I think it's been really popular recently. I think with the 90s style that's quite in the shops at the moment on the high street, people have been um, yeah, reaching for this pattern. And it's really lovely. I'll show you the line drawings. It is a um, princess seamed dress, or you can make it into a romper as well. That's kind of almost culotte like because you can't really see um, very clearly it's a romper because there's so much um, fabric there. It's quite swishy. But yeah, swishy dress or romper style. It's got two little sleeve lengths, either sort of a standard sleeve or a little cap sleeve. It's got a v-neck and then it's buttoned down at the front and it's got a little tie at the back too. So there's some really lovely details on it. And I like that it's princess themed. It's a bit different, I think. And I think princess themes give a really nice shape too. But I made a version that I shared in my last makes vlog and I'll put a link up in case you fancy checking that one out in a viscose twill, which I thought was a slightly more wintry fabric. But I wanted to make one that was super summery too. And I saw some fabric on the Guthrie Garni website that I thought would be perfect for it. And I made this version here. So here's my really summery version in a really lightweight viscose. This um, viscose is really yeah, light and floaty, so I thought it would be perfect for a summery version. It's really cute. It's got little daisies on it and red. And I added little um, white buttons on. Um, so yeah, that's my version here. And I'm really pleased how it turned out. Um, for this version, I made the size zero again um, on, on the pattern. That's designed for chest 32 and waist 26, which are my measurements. And then the hip measurements for this pattern is for a size zero is 34 inches and I'm 36. But because there's so much fabric then, it's really swishy. There's loads of room around the hips, so I didn't need to um, grade up for the hips and it just fits me fine. I did make a toile of this pattern before I um, actually made my first version. And then I made this version again based on the adjustments I made in my toile. So I made the size zero, but I added an inch to the length. 
because I thought it was going to come up quite short and I didn't want it too super short because I thought particularly this version I probably won't be wearing with bare legs in summer. And then I also made a couple of other adjustments. I adjusted the princess seams at the front slightly um, to, to fit my um, bust. I just needed to adjust the curve slightly so they sat in the right place on my bust. And I also took in the side seams just slightly because it was coming up quite um, big around the waist. And I also lowered the um, armhole slightly just so it wasn't too tight around the arm because particularly in summer I want it to be fairly loose and comfy. But it's a really lovely pattern. I really like True Bias instructions. I find them really methodical and really um, enjoyable to sew. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to wearing this one. I'll pop a picture up of me wearing it. I think in summer I'll probably be styling it with a pair of white plimp soles and a jeans jacket probably. So yeah, proper 90s style there. And um, what else to mention about this one? In terms of the sizing, it goes up to a size 18, which is chest 44 and a half, waist 38 and a half, and hips 46 and a half. So it's not the biggest size range. And True Bias have released um, some of their patterns in an extended size range, but they haven't released the Shelby in the extended size range yet at least. But fingers crossed they will, because it's such a nice pattern. It'll be nice if it was available to all sizes. But that's my first make, the... Um, Shelby um, dress by True Bias. Oh yeah, I made the dress version. I didn't mention that. But yeah, it's really lovely and swishy and this fabric's really lightweight. Um, I think it's sold out at, Min um, at Guthrie Garney, but I did check and I think there's a little bit left in stock for this uh, fabric at Minerva. So I'll put a link down below in case you fancy checking it out. It's a really lightweight viscose, but it was nice to sew actually and it didn't uh, yeah, behave fairly well for viscose. But that's my first make. I really love this red colour, um, the Shelby um, dress by True Bias. My second June make I have to share with you is another dress and actually another pattern by True Bias. And it's this pattern here, which is the Southport dress by True Bias. And this is a pattern that I have been wanting to sew for a long time. And so I thought this is the year I'm going to do it. And I put it on my make nine plans for this year. And that's a list of nine patterns I wanted to sew for this year. And I've done a vlog talking about those nine patterns I fancied sewing. If you fancy checking it out, I'll put a link down below. But yeah, this was on my list of patterns I wanted to sew this year, so I've been looking out for a fabric to sew this in. But I'll show you the details of the pattern first. So it's a summery um, dress. Um, it comes in two lengths, kind of just above the knee length and a full um, long length with a split at the front. And then it's got a sort of strappy bodice, but they aren't super thin straps. They're kind of um, wide enough to cover bra straps. And it's got a little button down bodice, darts and then a drawstring waist. So it's a nice detailed and it's quite a relaxed casual one and I thought it'd be perfect for kind of a day at the beach or that sort of thing. Um, it's another one that unfortunately doesn't come in the um, extended size range on True Bias um, but another one that we'll have to keep fingers crossed they might extend so it only goes up to size 18 and the same measurements as the Shelby dress. But for my version um, I'd been looking around for fabric for a while and I found this fabric on Somi Shunshine's website and I'll show you the um, dress with the fabric and this is I think it's called sheared cotton slub because it's a cotton fabric but it's got this shearing um, detail built in these little bits here elasticated so it kind of crinkles up a bit and this kind of pretty sort of rose pink and white stripe so here's my version you can see the bodice there I just went for plain white buttons and you can see the drawstrings here um, and then it's kind of got bias binding around the neckline and I used um, some off cuts from another make that I thought matched quite well for the bias bindings. I didn't want to use this fabric for the bias binding with the shearing. I thought it might sort of stretch a bit strangely. So I thought I'd go for a more stable cotton for a bias binding that I made. So this is my version. Um, so I made the size zero on this again because um, the finished measurements look like they come up um, fine for me on the size zero, which is chest 32, waist 26, hips 34. Again, my hips a bit bigger, but the finished garment measurements look like that size would be fine for me. And I decided to make the longer version. I'll put up a picture of me wearing it. Now, I actually, the only adjustment I made to this pattern was to lengthen the skirt of it, because I was conscious that if it's long, I didn't want it to end up being a bit too short. But I lengthened it, ended up super duper long, so I needn't have lengthened it. Um, so this version shows me before I've hemmed it. Um, but yeah, I need to, actually still need to do the hemming a bit and figure out what length exactly I want it to be. So and the, I found the construction process fairly straightforward on this pattern and the instructions really good to follow. The thing I found trickiest about this um, making this one was that fab cutting out the fabric. Um, firstly, I needed to do the stripe matching, um, as you can see across um, with these little lines of the shearing. Because it was crinkly as well, it was really hard to kind of flatten it down because I couldn't really iron it out because it's kind of crinkles. So it was really tricky um, cutting this out. But once I cut it out, it was kind of plain sailing on putting it all together. But I'm just not sure it's very me. Um, I'm not a big long dress person anyway, so I am thinking about sort of chopping it off to knee length and seeing whether that might work better for me. But also, I found it's come up a little bit roomy in the bodice, 
and it doesn't really feel um I just I don't know it just doesn't feel very me so I think I'm gonna have to go away and have a think about this one I don't know whether the fabric I chose um because it's a cotton isn't super drapey and maybe it would have worked better with something drapey um for me I just don't know um, but I think it's quite cute. Um, so I think it's one I need to sort of have a mull over of, really. But it was really enjoyable to make. Um, the pattern instructions are great. Um, and yeah, I do think this fabric's really cute. I'm just not sure it's quite as me as some of the other makes I've made this month. But that is the Southport dress by True Bias. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one, but I'm glad that I have actually crossed up that one for my make nine um, and given it a go at least. <laughs> that was, yeah, make number two. So I have got a couple more summery dresses to share with you in my June makes because um, I somehow seem to have sewn quite a few dresses this month. But I thought I'd break up now and share with you a different make, and it is a piece of swimwear. And it also was on my Make 9 plans for this year, along with a Southport dress, so I'm really pleased I've made it. And I do actually really enjoy sewing my own swimwear. Well, it's not my favourite thing to sew, actually, sewing swimwear, but I love to be able to make my own swimwear, because before I started sewing it, I really found I struggled to find what I wanted on the high street. I wanted something that would look nice, but also be quite practical too when I'm swimming with children and I want to make sure I'm covered up enough. So it's really nice to be able to sew my own swimwear and be able to um, sort of tick those criteria off. And yeah, make something that's just um, unique to me, I guess. But the swimwear pattern I put on my Make Nine plans was this one here. And it's the Pilates swimsuit by Opian. And it's a really lovely swimsuit. It's my I've made a couple of bikinis before. This is my first swimsuit I've made. Um, it's got a really lovely detail. It's got this tie front and then a cut out back. And then it's got kind of, I guess, fairly sort of high um, cut um, pants. And also the waist is fairly high too. So that's the kind of swimsuit. Um, and so, yeah, I had some fabric in mind I wanted to use to make this one. And I got it um, a, a while ago for Christmas, actually. And it's this fabric here. I'll show you my swimsuit. It's hard to show it off really on camera because it kind of just hangs. But um, it's this lovely um, Liberty swimwear fabric that came from Sister Mintaka, which I asked um, for Christmas from my husband. And yeah, I was a bit nervous to cut into it. So I did make a toile of this um, swimming costume first. And I'm pleased I did because I had to make a few tweaks to it. So um, I made um, the size um, one on top and size two on bottom for this pattern. And um, I made that for the toile and that fit fine. Um, so I made that again for the main piece. And it's quite nice because it's quite easy to adjust um, because it's the sort of top and bottom pieces get sewn together. So you don't need to do too much grading. You can just pick the size on top and bottom fairly easily. But what I did find for my toile was that it came up a little bit short in the body for me. So I lengthened these straps at the side here by an inch just to give a little bit more room. And um, I'm pleased how it is, but I think I could even lengthen it a bit more if I made it again, actually. But it is comfy and much better as it is. And it was a nice sew, actually. The instructions were good to follow. But I did also find um, for my second version that I adjusted my approach for how I sewed in the elastic, particularly to the pants. So here's my elastic sewn and I'm quite pleased with the finish on it. Um, it's quite like neat and it sits quite flat. My first version I made came up a little bit wavy round here. I'm um, using the approach in this pattern. So for my second version, for my proper version, I decided to use the method for finishing the elastic that is used by the Vanazza two-piece swimsuit by Friday Pattern Company. And it just involves sewing the elastic a little bit further in. So you kind of need to increase the seam allowances slightly. Sew the elastic a little bit further in, trimming the ends off and then turning under. And somehow sewing the elastic a little bit further in, I find, makes a lot of difference to how the finish comes out when you do finally fold the elastic in and sew it up. So I just increased the seam allowances slightly on my bikini pants um, and use that method to sew the elastic in. It's got a really nice finish, I think. Um, what else to mention about it? Um, yeah, it actually sews together really nicely and surprisingly quickly. And the nice thing about swimwear is you really don't need too much fabric. So although this fabric was quite expensive, I didn't actually need that much. I can't remember how much I had. Um, my husband got me. I think it was either a metre or a metre and a half, possibly a metre and a half, because I used the same fabric to line both the bodice and oh no, I didn't line the pants, just the bodice I lined. Um, but yeah, so that's my um, Opium Pilates swimsuit and I'll put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see how it looks. So I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I really like the back detail. I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks at the back too. Um, but yeah, it was a really nice um, make. I definitely recommend it if you wanted to try sewing swimwear. It's just some really pretty details. Oh, I think one other thing I did actually was to add a bit more coverage on the bottom piece. I think I might have um, brought this a little bit out just to make sure it covered my bottom thoroughly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the Opium Pilates swimsuit and I'm really pleased I've got that one. I'm looking forward to wearing that one. Hopefully if we make it on holiday this year, um, fingers crossed. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention on the Opium Pilates was the sizing. So um, this goes from size one to eight and size one is a bust 32, waist 24, hips 34 and it goes up to a bust 44 waist 35 
hips 46. So that's one of the downsides of this pattern. It hasn't got the most um, inclusive size range, unfortunately. But um, it is a really lovely pattern with some really lovely details if you are interested in getting into sewing some swimwear. So my next um, make for June is another dress and I think it might be one of my favourite makes for this month. And um, it's um, another of my make nine actually, so I've done well this month for taking off my make nine. And it's this is actually the only pattern I had on my make nine that was a repeat pattern. But it's one I've been wanting to make another version of for ages and it's this one here. It is the Charlie Kaftan by Closet Core Patterns. And it's a really lovely pattern for summer. It's a kind of loose fitting dress. I'll show you the um, line drawings. It's got, um, yeah, it's fairly loose fitting. You can make either kind of a boxy kind of shape here with some architectural pleats or with gathering underneath this little bodice panel. Or you can make sort of like almost like a Grecian full length version. Again, with gathering a little waist tie to bring in. And it's got two sleeve options, a sort of slightly wider sleeve and then a slightly smaller sleeve um, because the wider sleeve does leave you quite um, open at the sides. So for a bit more modesty, you go for the smaller sleeve. But yeah, it's a really lovely pattern. And um, with Closet Core, they have a really good size range as well. So um, I've got the um, paper pattern, which is size 0 to 20. But there's also a PDF version, which goes up to size 30. Um, so yeah, really inclusive. And it's a really lovely one. And I made a version a couple of years ago in a viscose fabric. And it's one of those dresses I always pull out when it's really hot weather. Because the viscose is so breathable and it's so loose um, and relaxed. But it also covers me up. It's just so comfy to wear in hot weather. And I've been looking for some fabric to make a second version, but I've been really struggling to find anything that seemed right. And then um, I managed to win some fabric um, in a competition on Instagram run by um, Mel of Stitch Make Bake. And I'll link her details below. She has some lovely makes on Instagram. And um, it, she ra ran this competition in, in collaboration with Atelier Dupe which is a Belgian-based fabric um, and pattern house. And they produce some lovely, lovely fabrics. And I was really lucky to win this fabric here, which is one of their viscoses. And it's just so gorgeous. And then this sort of green kind of tropical print. And I thought that has to be made into a Charlie Kafta and that'll be perfect. So here's my version. So I made the version with the gathering underneath um, the panel and I added in the waist ties for shaping. But I made the knee length version. I didn't have enough fabric for the full length. And as I mentioned earlier in the vlog, I'm not a big fan of full, full length um, dresses on me anyway. So yeah, I made the knee length version. And, and so yeah, here it is. And I, I really love it. The fabric was lovely to work with and it just feels so nice. And it's funny, actually, I wore this out at the weekend. Um, we went to um, um, a pub with um, some friends and my um, friend, she's not all at all into fabric. She really liked the fabric and actually wanted to stroke the fabric, <laughs> which I thought was funny because I didn't know that people that aren't sewing people like to stroke fabric, but <laughs> she really liked it and wanted to stroke it too. So it must be nice fabric. Um, but yeah, this is my version. I'll put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see how it looks um, on me. So I made the size zero on this pattern um, and that actually is for measurements smaller than me. It's for a bust 31, waist 24, hips 33. But I had made a larger version before um, and actually it came up a bit baggy. So I thought I was going to size down and I'm really pleased with the sizing now. I don't think it looks too small, really. There's quite a lot of room in it. Um, so yeah, I sized down even though my actual measurements would put me at a size two for bust size four for waist and size six for hips. The size zero just worked out fine for me. So I'm glad I sized down because it does feel a slightly better fit than my first version. And I really enjoyed making it actually. It's a bit of a fiddly one, particularly I think attaching this facing around the V-neck is quite fiddly and also putting in this panel here um, on the bodice. But Closet Core has a really good um, tutorial online for putting in this bodice panel. So I'd really recommend looking at that if you're going to have a go of um, this one. I'll put a link down below to that. And I found that really useful to help follow that through. Once you've done the v-neck and the little panel, it comes together really nicely. And yeah, it's just a really comfy one to wear for summer. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So um, yeah, that's my Charlie Kaftan by Closet Core Patterns in this beautiful Atelier dupe fabric. I'm definitely going to be wearing this one a lot this summer if we get some more um, warm weather, fingers crossed. <laughs> Oh, and I thought I mentioned, in case you were wondering on fabric requirements for that one, um, I won two metres of that fabric and I just managed to squeeze the caftan into it. Um, but it was a bit of a squeeze. Um, but yeah, that was two metres of fabric to make that Charlie caftan. My next make was just a really quick make and one that I kind of needed um, for summer. And it was just a pyjama top for me to wear in summer. And here it is. Um, it's a vest top. And I made it using this pattern here, which is the Keeler Tank by Ali Olsen Patterns. And it's a really nice and um, basic vest top pattern with a few nice details. It's got a little racer back detail, which I like. And also um, bias binding is used to finish um, the neckline and armholes. And I think that's a really nice detail. It makes it really soft and comfortable to wear, particularly at night. See, so this is my version and you can see um, the bias binding um, kind of goes in around the neckline um, and armholes. Um, yeah, and just uh, quite a nice finish it gives. And I made this in a cotton jersey from Minerva. 
I made one version before and I think it had been a slightly lighter weight cotton jersey so although I made this one the same sizing as my previous one it's come out a little bit more fitted I think because the jersey has a bit less give in it but I'll put a link down to this jersey so if you're looking for a slightly more substantial jersey I recommend this one but I think maybe in hindsight a slightly lighter weight jersey might have been better because it is a little bit more sturdy for a sleep top um, but yeah this is the Ali Olsen Keeler Tank um, I made this this has a lot of negative ease built in I think it's designed to be made um, in a rib fabric which is very stretchy and I knew with the cotton jersey it wouldn't be that stretchy so I sized up and I think I might have sized up three or four sizes even yeah I sized up to bust size eight bust and size 10 hips um, which yeah which is two sizes bigger on the um, no one two three four sizes bigger on the bust and um yeah, four sizes big on the hips as well so I sized up quite a lot and I'll put up a picture you can see it still comes up fairly fitted so you definitely I'd recommend sizing up on this one it's a nice little pattern and the great thing is um, it's a really inclusive size range and it comes in two different cup sizes too so it's got a b cup size chart which takes you from size 0 to 18 and a d cup size chart which takes you from size 12 these are us sizes to size 30. so yeah it's a really inclusive pattern and those pattern sizes are all included in the paper pattern which I think is quite nice too but yeah, it's just a quick make. As I said, um, yeah, I like it. I really like the colour of the blue. Um, but I just think it's a slightly heavyweight jersey. Um, and I think next time I'll go for something a bit lighter weight. But that is the benefit of hindsight and buying online. <laughs> so my final sewing make um, for this month is one that I really enjoyed sewing, actually. And it's using a pattern that is a real favourite of mine. And it's this pattern here, which is the Calais shirt and shirt dress by Closet Core Patterns. And I do really enjoy sewing closet core patterns. I find them um, really um, clear to follow um, and the instructions are really uh, make a lot of sense. And they also often include a lot of different variations. So the Calais shirt dress have loads of different variations here. And um, yes, yeah, so you can do different collars, like a mandarin collar or a full collar. You can do the hidden placket or a pop-over placket or a full um, sort of exposed placket, as it were. And there's different um, options for your sort of um, pleats on the back too. So it's a really lovely pattern and I think you can really um, yeah, play with it and make lots of different versions. And um, I decided to make a version using some beautiful fabric that I'd had my eye on for ages, but I couldn't think what to make with it. And it's a cotton poplin. I don't often sew with a cotton poplin. I guess it's a bit more substantial than cotton lawn. And I'd usually go for maybe a cotton lawn for a summer dress. But I thought um, for a shirt dress, it'd be perfect. So when I thought of the Calais, I thought, right, I'm going to buy that fabric and I'm just going to make it. And I really enjoyed making it. And here is my Calais using this lovely cotton poplin fabric that I really loved and it came from Sew Me Sunshine. I think it might have sold out now but if I, I'll include a link to Sew Me Sunshine and if there, there is any of this left I'll include a link to it. Um, it's a really lovely pretty fabric with pops and dots of different floral colours on it and I had a bit of fun with this pattern so I used um, yellow top stitching and then I made yellow buttonholes and added on these bright yellow buttons too. And I made the mandarin collar version. I did the um, sort of a sort of V pleat at the back it's hard to see there but there it is and then I made the um, shirt dress length so it could wear it as a dress without leggings or jeans underneath and I love the bias binding finish around the curve hem. I think it's such a pretty detail of this pattern so I'm really happy with how it turned out and I really enjoyed sewing it too so it's like a win-win on this one so in terms of sizing Firstly, um, as I said, Closet Core are really good with their patterns. Um, this pattern has two size ranges. The paper pattern is from 0 to 20. There's also a PDF pattern available from 14 to 30. But um, I am um, sized down on this pattern because it's designed to be quite oversized and the finished garment measurements look big. So every time I've made the Cali, I've sized down to a size 0. And the size 0 is for bust 31, waist 24, hips 33. And I'm a lot bigger than that, but I still find it fits me really nicely like that. Like that. And I didn't want this shirt dress to feel like it was wearing me, particularly this bright colour, so I did want it a little bit more fitted. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see. The only adjustment I made was to lengthen the shirt dress by two and a half inches, because I made a version, I think it was last year, and I didn't lengthen it. And it's a little bit too short to wear without leggings underneath. Um, so I wanted to make sure this version would be long enough so it did feel comfortable to wear without leggings, and I'm quite happy with the length of it. So I'm glad I did lengthen it by that two and a half inches. Other than that, it was just a real pleasure to sew. Obviously, sewing with cotton poplin is such a nice stable fabric and works really well for a shirt. And I just really enjoyed, um, yeah, going up. And I also, um, I've made a couple more versions of this. The first version I did a pop-over placket. The second version I did a hidden placket. So this one I decided to do the full palette placket. because so I thought it'd be quite fun to have those yellow buttons all the way down. But that is my Calais shirt dress. I really love it and I haven't had a chance to wear it yet actually because the weather has been a bit cool um, since I've um, finished it. So I really can't wait to wear that one out actually. But it's a lovely pattern and I really enjoyed sewing it in that bright fabric. I think it will cheer me up any day I do wear that one. 
So that was my final sewing make for this month, but I've also got one knitting make I've got to share with you. And it's another um, knitted animals make. And I made it using this book here, which is my um, Knitted Cats and Dogs book by Sue Stratford. So I had been making um, some knitted cats from the cat version. And then my children and I were looking, we saw this version online and they obviously wanted to get it so I could knit some dogs for them too. So the pattern um, I've been knitting this month is um, this one here, which is the Cuddle Pup pattern. So it's designed to be a kind of slightly chunky um, pup is knitted in chunky wool. I haven't knitted any toys in chunky wool. It was quite nice, it's so knitted up really quickly. And I made one for my son and one for my daughter. And here they are, this is the one for my son. See, because it's quite a chunky, sort of a, yeah, cute little rounded um, thing um, with little teeny eyes and floppy ears. Um, yeah, that's my son's one. And then my daughter, being my daughter, wanted a pink version. So here's um, Cuddle Pup and Pink. Um, with little, yeah, she's got a little kind of creamy coloured ear underneath. So I tried to use leftover wool where I can. So the underneath ears needed to be knitted in Aran yarn, I think, and I had some leftover in that colour. And then my son's got quite a matching colour for his under ears. But here they are. They're really cuddly. Um, yeah, they're quite jolly, aren't they? And they're fun to knit. They knit up really quickly, actually. And if you're looking for a... Um, a fairly straightforward um, knitted toy pattern. I found this one quite a good one. Some of the, th this book has a bit of a mix of slightly more complicated knits and slightly more straightforward knits. And this was a bit of a more straightforward one and they sewed up quite quickly too, so that was good. But there they are, <laughs> the two cuddle pups. Um, yeah, they've been playing with them quite a lot. So I'm quite pleased that they like them. But that was my final uh, make for this month. Thank you so much for watching my vlog. Um, if you have enjoyed the vlog, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really love it if you would subscribe and also press the bell icon and then you'll be notified of any future vlogs that come out. Um, I hope you have a lovely week, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye.